My name is Robert Locklear, and I serve as the Regional Impact Manager for the Sand Hills Region. I am so excited to share the latest educational data and the pathway for our region to create opportunities for all. While doing our part to contribute to the statewide goal of 2 million by 2030. Most recent data show that almost 97,000 residents aged 25 to 44 in our region hold a college degree or an industry value credential. I am proud to say we're making progress, but there is still much work to be done. As you can see in the graph, a breakdown of our residents attainment shows that we have 43,000 residents who have some college, but no degree and almost 60,000 have only a high school diploma. Even with the progress we are making in our region, we still have a gap to fill and not all counties are experiencing this attainment growth. To ensure our region remains economically competitive now and into the future, we need 121,000 residents aged 25 to 44 to hold a degree or credential by 2030. This is our part, the Sand Hills part in the 2 million goal, and we are currently 25,000 away from that target. So how can we fill the gap? To figure out where we are losing students along the educational workforce continuum, let's first look at our region's education leaky pipeline. Only 23 out of 100 ninth grade public school students in the Sand Hills graduate high school on time, enroll in college on time, and then earn a degree or certificate within six years of high school graduation. This education pipeline shows a painful reality. Too many students are dropping out at different places in the pipeline, but this also gives us the data to determine where change and student support are needed most. Now, let's walk through a student's journey, starting with academic readiness. Only 24% of our region's third through eighth grade students are college and career ready in reading and only 25% are college and career ready in math. These staggering outcomes are directly linked to high chronic absenteeism. Most recent data show that 39% of our students miss more than 10% of the school days. That's more than one in every three students. And as we know, chronically absent students are much more likely to drop out of school. In the 2022 school year loan, over a thousand of Sand Hills high schoolers dropped out. As a result, many of our students experienced the first leak of the educational pipeline and they don't even finish high school. On to the next transition point, college and career access. High school students in North Carolina have the amazing opportunity to earn college credits or credentials while still in high school which can ultimately help to reduce an individual's cost for a college degree. They do this by enrolling in College and Career Promise or CCP. In the Sand Hills region, over 5,000 graduates participated in the College and Career Promise program. These students are opening doors for their future, whether it's college, next, or straight to a career. Another important step in college affordability is completion of the FAFSA or the free application for federal student aid. This is required to unlock federal and state need-based grant opportunities, as well as many scholarships. During the last FAFSA cycle, 63% of Sand Hill seniors completed a FAFSA application, which is slightly higher than the statewide average. Still, we are leaving money on the table for our region students. So it's important that we encourage every student to complete the FAFSA as an important first step toward college enrollment. The last leak in the pipeline is workforce alignment. Our education systems must align with employer needs so students graduate with the skills required to fill higher paying jobs. And so employers have the talented workforce to meet their needs. Currently, only 40% of our region's 25 to 44 year olds earn a living wage 
or just enough to cover necessary expenses. In Richmond County, for example, that would be approximately $32,000. To see the living wage threshold in all counties, scan the QR code shown on the slide. When students are not academically prepared and don't see a pathway to college or career, they often become disengaged and begin missing school. Oftentimes, they end up dropping out and even disconnected from society. In our region, there are 17,000 young adults ages 16 to 24 who are not in school or working. These are our opportunity youth and a staggering amount, one in every six young adults is disconnected within our region. Now, I want to show you why we need to take action now and work towards achieving our attainment goal. This isn't just important for the present, but it's also crucial for the future. By 2030, the overall population in our region is projected to increase to almost 900,000 and it's expected to continue growing to 983,000 by 2050. At the same time, our working age population, specifically those aged 25 to 44, projects a decline between 2010 and 2030. However, this population is expected to increase by 9% from 2030 to 2050. So we need to be prepared and our local businesses, industries, colleges, and universities all need to be ready to accommodate the booming population. While not every county is experiencing this growth, employers don't care about county lines. So it's important we have an educated and skilled workforce across the entire region. So we have skilled Sand Hills residents filling and creating Sand Hills jobs. Now, let's look at the demographic shifts in the region from 2010 to 2050. It is projected that all races and ethnicities, except for white, will increase in our region. As our region becomes more diverse, what does this mean? It means if we don't act with a sense of urgency, we will actually see a decline in educational attainment levels. Data shows that 57% of the white population have a degree or credential, whereas only 25% of Hispanics have a degree or credential. With the Black, American Indian, and Hispanic populations in our region forecasted to increase in the next decades, it's crucial that we work towards improving the achievement of these groups. And if we don't, our region's attainment will not only not increase, it will actually decline. While I've shared some staggering data, despite all the challenges we face, I assure you there is a path to prosperity for our region's residents. Why? Because of all of you. Our employers and our residents need us to be successful. And if aligned and properly directed, we have the resources and people to make it happen. We are fortunate to have strong public schools and a very robust education and training infrastructure, including all the colleges and universities in the region, the workforce development boards, and the councils of government that offer multiple services for students and adults and prepare for the workforce in our region. As one example, we have a statewide initiative underway known as NC Reconnect. The John M. Belk Endowment is leading this effort in partnership with My Future NC, our local community colleges, the North Carolina State Belk Center, and the North Carolina Community College System. This collaborative project is to recruit adult learners with some college, but no degree back to the classroom and help them complete what they started, but never finished. To assist with affordability, the North Carolina State Education Assistance Authority provides a statewide FAFSA tracker to monitor and encourage FAFSA completions at each school. Last year, we collaborated with philanthropy and state agencies to coordinate the first ever statewide financial aid summit, where over 250 counselors, 
school leaders, and financial aid staff gathered to learn from subject matter experts and to share challenges and successes to ultimately help more students have access to an affordable education. As mentioned earlier, aligning the workforce with our education systems and training programs is critical. As such, we have partnered with multiple state agencies to identify needed workforce credentials, including the Department of Commerce, Department of Public Instruction, the Governor's Office, and the Community College System Office, all working together with business and industry leaders to understand their needs and to offer training programs that lead to careers in demand that pay a family sustaining wage. One of my future's NC's strategic priorities is to identify and advocate for policy solutions. Our board has adopted the policy agenda shown here for the General Assembly's 2024 short session. Each of these priorities is supported by ongoing research from across the state and around the country, and they were developed alongside leaders from our education, business, and philanthropic communities. On the right hand side of this chart, it shows where these priorities were identified based on their potential to move the needle on one or more of the three areas in which my future NC is placing big bets. On-time enrollment and persistence, adult learner enrollment and persistence, and labor market alignment. These policy priorities are categorized under four headings, NC workforce credentials, access persistence and completion, local regional technical assistance, and partner support items where my future NC has been asked to come alongside our partners on issues that we've advocated for in prior years and that need continued attention, such as NC pre-K funding, implementation of the science of reading in early grades, and implementation of career development plans for North Carolina students in grades K-12. Looking at the chart in front of you, we are first excited to build on the success of the NC Workforce Credentials Initiative which has identified more than 150 short-term non-degree credentials that are industry valued by North Carolina employers, meaning they connect to strong employment opportunities and high demand, high growth jobs that pay a family sustaining wage. In order to build on that success, we'll advocate for the work of this initiative to be supported permanently within the Department of Commerce and for more financial aid to be provided to students pursuing industry value credentials. Non-degree training is not only eligible for federal Pell or state need-based grants, and students often cannot afford this training, even though employers need workers with these credentials. We'll also be asking for increased support for work underway to develop a warehouse to better track employment outcomes tied to these credentials. Second on the policy agenda is access, persistence, and completion where we'll be advocating for targeted assistance to help students persist and make it across the finish line to their credential or degree. Our third policy recommendation is for local regional technical assistance, where we'll be advocating for funding to support grants that can spur local innovation by leveraging cross-sector community collaboratives. We invite all of you to join us in our advocacy efforts this year in whatever way is the best fit for you. And as always, we hope that you'll consider us a resource. We're always happy to come alongside you in your efforts to engage your community in support of educational attainment. I want to close with what gives me hope. You do, and our students do. The leadership, the strong partnerships, and the passion in this region coming together and collaborating and aligning our resources towards a common North Star, keeping students and employers at the center of everything we do. This keeps me going and it gives me hope. The future of this region depends on our collective success and we cannot afford to fail. Shown here are just a few examples of the cross-sector collaboratives underway all across the Sandhills. It is my honor and privilege to serve the Sandhills region and to work with you I now offer up a challenge to each of us to turn this important mission into a movement for our region and our great state. Our students and our businesses are counting on us. 
let's all ask ourselves, what can we do together that we cannot do alone? And then let's act. With every key stakeholder working collaboratively and aligning efforts towards our region's North Star, we can and we will meet our region's goal of 121,000 and the state's attainment goal of 2 million by 2030. In doing so, we will improve the economic prosperity of our residents, our employers, our region, and ultimately North Carolina for generations to come. Thank you.